There's been a marginal improvement in the number of people employed in the formal sector of the economy in the third quarter. Let's get some reaction on the job figures that were released a little bit earlier on with Tony Arunroch, the Kosatu Provincial Secretary for the Western Cape. Thanks so much for your time on SABC News. Let's just start with your reaction to those figures that came out earlier on today. Good afternoon. Well, we think the figures are moving in the right direction. That, along with GDP increases in the last quarter, shows that the economy is heading in a direction that we clearly need to be bolstering and improving even more. While the jobs are growing in defined sectors, we're concerned about the reduction in jobs in the public service, especially on the back of the fact that we need to expand the public service to provide poorer communities with more effective services. We welcome these job increases, but we certainly want to urge the government and the private sector to invest a lot more, to do a lot more, and to make sure that we can address the 70% unemployment levels among youth, and also deal with the questions of unemployment as a society generally. That's around four, that's around 10 million people. This is nearly 40% of the active population. So a lot more must be done, but we're glad that we heading in the right direction. This trajectory will hopefully bring the desired results in the new year when there's more hope and opportunities for the young people leaving school. Yeah, Tony, there's a number of systemic issues that lead to this unemployment figure outside of the current challenges that we face in South Africa now. So if these are not solved and we don't see growth of more than the 1%, 1.6% that we're sputtering along at in South Africa, we won't get rid of the situation and we'll be in this perpetual cycle of increasing unemployment. What's to be done? Well, you're absolutely right that the levels of growth that we have in relation to the level of unemployment and the challenges that we have at the socio-economic level needs a much bolder response from government and the private sector and needs much more decisive leadership in the country. One of the things we need to do is to consider raising taxes on the billionaires in South Africa. They can certainly be contributing a lot more. Because as you say, the systemic challenges within our society will tear apart our society. The huge levels of inequality that just continues to grow even after apartheid shows more clearly that the growth trajectory and the economic development path of the country is not in the right direction. We can't just make a few black billionaires to sit alongside the white billionaires. What we need is economic plan, a trajectory, a clear detailed program that ensures that we create the kind of society that provides opportunities for everybody and just doesn't ensure that people can hold on to the grand theft of apartheid and enrich a few BE uh, conspirators, conspiracies. What we've got to do is have a plan that responds to the needs of the majority of South Africans. But we must call on the majority of South Africans to take a stand against government policies that seeks to privatize all of the infrastructure so that the rich can further enrich themselves. And we've got to ensure that the poor people understand and that we've got to push for policies that forces the ANC and the government as a whole to respond to the challenges of the nearly 12 million people who don't have jobs in our country. Yeah, I mean, you're speaking about South Africans needing to rise up. You're part of the tripartite alliance. If anyone can fix this problem, people, uh, members of your union and people who trust you assume you should fix this and it hasn't been fixed yet. Why? Well, clearly, we must point fingers at ourselves, both in the tripartite alliance and whilst we have adopted policies, the Freedom Charter, for example, the Reconstruction and Development Program is clearly plans to rebuild the country in the interest of the majority of people who were excluded. That's why they have clauses like the land will be shared by those who work it, that people who occupy the land, will own the land. And all of those provisions talks about undoing the legacy of apartheid. But what we've seen after we've entered into nearly a joint government with the ANC, the SACP and Kusatu, is that there's a section of the elite, even in the ANC, who's enriched themselves at all costs and enriched themselves as the people. And those corrupt, those who during the nine years had looted all state institutions, they must go straight to jail. We must ensure that the renewal that President Ramaphosa is on, that that picks up speed. We get people into jail, we get the money back, the money's invested in creating economic opportunities. And we point out to the president that we don't want what he has become. We don't want billionaires in South Africa. We want decent lifestyles for all of our people. That's what the Freedom Charter promised our people. And that's what we've got to work towards more urgently and with more active engagements in the new year. 
Tony Aronrich, Kostatis Provincial Secretary, joining me there, reacting to those jobs figures and also talking about the solutions and challenges even when it comes to the tripartite alliance.